Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. This week's episode was kind of a downer. Not in the quality, I think it was an amazing episode, but in how it felt. Everyone's going through a hard time, but even then, this episode did have one of the happiest moments for me, and that's when we met Loyal. But before I get to Loyal, let's go to my number 5. At number 5, I have Steppen. Steppen was Karini's water, and we saw Karini die in the last episode. And throughout this episode, we see what a water goes through psychologically when their Aes Sedai dies. When the bond between the two is broken like this, this is what happens. Steppen loses his will to live and ends up taking his own life, which was tough to see. Something that I realized when watching this episode is that there's a parallel between what happens when a channeler is cut off from the one power and when a water's bond to their Aes Sedai is broken. Tom's nephew Owen lost his will to live after he was gentled and when we saw Loghain in this episode, he seemed completely broken due to being gentled in the last episode. In the books, we hear and kind of see what happens when a water loses their Aes Sedai, but I honestly think that the show has done a much better job at showing this. Next time a water loses their Aes Sedai, we'll know exactly what they're going through. At number 4, I have a very short scene, but I think it's an important one. When Matt and Rand go to see the false dragon Loghain, Loghain looks at them, or I think he looks at Matt, and begins laughing. So that begs the question, why was he laughing? Can he see that one of them is the dragon reborn? Or that one of them can channel just like he could? Or maybe he just remember a really good joke? Either way, if he does see something weird in Matt or Rand, how can he see it if he no longer can channel? This scene is pretty much straight from the book, although there are some differences, and I really like this scene because I remember reading it in the book and I couldn't wait to find out why Loghain laughed. And now in the show, I'm really glad they kept the scene because once again, I'll have to wait to find out why he laughed since I'm sure it's gonna be different in the show. Also, something that I noticed when doing this video is that when Rand is looking for Matt right before they see Loghain, Pat and Fane can be spotted in the top left of this scene. He also laughs and walks away, so what could he be up to, I wonder. At number 3, I have the scene that brought me so much joy, and that's meeting Loyal, son of Arendt, son of Halan. Before I get into the scene, I have to say that ever since I first read The Eye of the World, I've pronounced Loyal as Loyal, but here in the show, they pronounce it Loyal, and that really bothers me. I know it's a dumb thing since it's a fantasy series with made up names and places and everyone pronounces things differently but still, this one really got to me and I really don't know why. But anyway, when this scene first starts, Rand is reading a book about the Koryathan cycle and I was so relieved to see this because in the books, the Koryathan cycle is a big deal and people constantly bring it up and in the show, it hadn't been brought up until now. So I'm glad we have this in the show now. Then we see Loyal for the first time and Rand who doesn't know what an Ogier looks like is terrified at first. But when Loyal mentions the steading, Rand realizes what he is. Loyal is convinced that Rand is an Aeel because of his red hair but Rand denies this and tells him that he's from the two rivers but still Loyal doesn't really believe it. I thought that this interaction was hilarious and this entire scene was just delightful to me. Also, the travels of Jane Farstrider is mentioned, so that makes this scene even cooler. The character of Loyal does not look like what I pictured, but honestly, that doesn't matter because everything else about him is perfect in my opinion. Hamed Animashan, the actor who is playing him, does an amazing job and I can't wait to see more of Loyal. At number 2, I have Nynaeve, Rand and Matt reuniting. I gotta be honest, at first this scene was really weird to me because in the previous scene, Nynaeve is speaking to Leandrin in the White Tower and then in this scene, which comes right after the other one, Nynaeve reunites with Rand and Matt. It feels like there's a scene missing because Nynaeve going from the White Tower to Rand and Matt's room immediately just felt kinda weird. 
Loyo does say that he went to look for Nynaeve and found her, and I think that's the scene that is missing. I would love to see Nynaeve and Loyo meet for the first time. But anyway, the three of them reunite, and Matt is getting worse and worse. When Nynaeve tries to help him, he snaps at her, and we hear the whispers once again. Later in the scene, Rand tells Nynaeve that he thinks that Matt can channel, so at this point, we gotta wonder, is Matt going crazy because he can channel, or is he going crazy because he took the dagger from Shadow Logoth? At number one, I have the Children of the Light capturing Perrin and Ewain. This too went from having the weakest plotline in the previous episode to having the strongest plotline in this episode, in my opinion. When the Tinkers come across Amon Balda and his questionnaires, Balda recognizes Perrin and Ewain. Valda orders his men to capture the two of them and the Tinkers try to stop them with pacifism, but the White Cloaks don't care and they beat the shit out of the poor Tinkers. Perrin and Ewain are captured and here we see how Valda and the questionnaires work and think. When they suspect someone of being a dark friend or in Ewain's case of using the One Power, they use a little known strategy called torture to get the quote unquote truth out of the suspect. The White Cloaks believe that the One Power comes from the Dark One, therefore everyone that uses it is a Dark Friend. In this case, Balda believes that Ewain is able to use the One Power, so he pushes her into using it to save a parent's life. Balda tortures Perrin, and as he's being tortured, Perrin's eyes turn yellow and we hear wolves howling. Finally, Ewain is able to use the One Power to free Perrin, thus proving Valda correct, but in the process, Valda also discovered something else. Perrin's eyes turn yellow once again, and it looks like he transforms into something for a second. Balda is shocked by this transformation and Ewain stabs him in the back. The White Cloak camp is overtaken by wolves and Perrin somehow knows that the wolves won't attack him or Ewain and so they escape. I was so happy to finally see Perrin Golden Eyes make its appearance and what a way to do it. Valda once again proves how much of a shithead he is but at least he got what was coming to him this time and Ewain took his collection of Dead Aesodai rings, which was cool. I hope the show explains Perrin's golden eyes in this season, but I'm not too sure. In the books, there's a character that does exactly that, but at this point in the show, I don't think that character is going to appear in this season of the show. Overall, guys, this episode set up so many things for the final three episodes, and finally meeting Loyal made me so happy. And by the way, I'm extra excited for episode 6 because it's Brandon Sanderson's favorite episode of the season apparently and I'm very curious to see why. And that's the end of the video everyone. I hope that you watching this have a fantastic day or night. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.